All right, so um, again, we're trying to figure out how to get everybody through with the class and get it done on time. Um, right now, most of you are not past modules eight or nine. Um, so we've got about a month of class left and um, well, a little less than a month. And we've got uh, a lot of work to get done. So one option we could have again is we do nothing. CCNA one class will end on June 10th. We would start CCNA two on June 17th. If we do that, I think it's gonna be a big struggle for some of you to finish the class on time and to understand the material, which is more important for me for you to understand the material. The other thing we could do is push the CCNA two start back uh, date to July 27th. I know I'm repeating myself folks, but I forgot to hit record a while ago. Um, and then uh, your new class date for CCNA two would be July 27th to September 28th, um, but it would give you plenty of time to work on that CCNA one class and get finished up. Um, so that's an option. And then again, there's maybe some option I haven't thought about that 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 you have. Um, the good news is you're still going to be all if you finish uh, the CCNA one class before July 27th, all of you would be accredited. If you finish the class successfully, you will all be accredited to teach CCNA one in the fall. So you can start teaching CCNA one in the fall to your students at your institution. Uh, which is was one of our goals, okay? So I don't think pushing the class back is going to have a major impact on your implementation of the Cisco, uh, Cisco Academy at your particular school. Um, but if there's something that I don't know or that's a big problem, then we could, we could do that. The other option I have had is I've got a couple folks who are actually dropping to the cohort two um, in other words, you're got, they're going to, this class finishes June 10th, they're going to continue working on CCNA 1, and then they're going to move into cohort 2. So they're basically unofficially doing option number 2. Um, but there's, I think there's two people in the class right now that I'm doing that with, um, that I'm kind of sliding into the second cohort. Um, from a, my standpoint, the options all work for me. Um, it would be easiest if all of you decided to slide to the second dates. Um, but if not, I'm fine with, with whatever's best for you. I, I'll make it work for you. Um, this is a super, super important project for me because I want to see these academies succeed and I want you to be successful. So um, it's, you've got a lot of, you got a lot of people watching uh, what we're doing and there's a lot of support from Cisco. Um, all the way up, all the way to the very top. I mean, to Chuck Robbins, to, to the top of Cisco. Um, you know, the CEO of Cisco is, is aware of the, of the uh, HBCU initiatives and what we're doing. So we want to make sure we can do everything we can to help you be successful. Um, so what are your opinions on these options? I think that we should move back to the, to the, to the second date. That gives me a little bit of breathing room. Okay, and that was Denise. Okay. Yep. All right. Uh, go ahead, Francisco. Professor Cotto. Yes, sir. For me, individually, either. But uh, one question, that, one question that I have is, I see less students in the in this cohort. How many did we start with? Uh, I think this this cohort started with twenty one students, and we still have twenty officially in the class. Okay, so. Uh, but I don't see the attendance of 20. Yeah. Well, and you got to understand these, these meetings are optional. Oh, well, they're not optional to view. They're optional to attend. That's why I record them, mm. um, Francisco. Okay. Um, so some, some people have classes during this time period. Okay. Um, some people simply can't. So there are some that are, are watching these videos. Um, yes. Um, you know, and, and they're, they're getting them. So Okay. I, I, Actually, I'll, I'll be honest with you. With a class of 20, having 11 or uh, just 10 of you, since I'm in here too, but having 10 of you here in a class meeting, it's actually a pretty high percentage. Um, okay. So, so I think, I, I think, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're still, we're doing pretty good. We just, again, it's a lot of work. I mean, we all, you've seen that it's a lot of work and there's no doubt it's a lot of work. Hey, Kelly, can you give me the list of the Hampton University individuals when you get a chance uh, who are still in? I will, uh, Dr. Harrison, I will send you that in an email, a separate email. Yes, thank um, you. I will, I will definitely do that. So, uh, Kelly Tracy. 
Uh, I I like the option two to the July twenty seventh. Okay. All right. So I've got two votes for option two. Me too. Okay, so three. So Dr. Harrison, I will get you a list of. And you can May make two. four. July seven. Option two, you can make that four or five. Okay. Or put you in okay. Four or five. I think there was no. Okay. So it sounds to me like that's probably going to be our best option. Um, uh, but I will. I will get you a list of all the uh, the Hampton. I go for option two too. Okay. Excellent. I will. I will put that down. Dr. Harrison, I saw a, a neat article about Hampton. Uh, was it over the weekend? Maybe it was Friday about a um, student who was coming to Hampton instead of Harvard. I thought that was very neat. Yeah, uh, that was very neat. Yes. It was on Teen, Teen Vogue, I think. I think I saw where I saw it. But I was like, yeah, I know, I know that school. I know exactly where that is. Excellent. So, um, Okay, well, I think we'll probably start. I'll, I'll, I'll get that moving that way. The good news for you is it's not going to have any effect on what you've got to do in terms of for the next class, we were going to easily enroll you in the next class anyway. So I'll make the changes on the back end and talk with Jesse Pagan at uh, at Cisco. Um, and then also, again, it will get us all on the same dates. Uh, and I'm not going to I will still have separate class meetings. Um, well, I may not. I'll see. I'll, I may have all the class meet at the same time and do two meetings a week and have one as a lab day. One is our our uh, uh, our day to do lecture. So we'll we'll see on that one. So but I will get you. As soon as this is over, Dr. Harrison, I'll get you a list. Professor Carter. Um, go ahead. Professor Carter, uh, I am kind of in the inertia mode on the lab. And I, I appreciate the fact that you want to have a session on, let's say, the, the lab. Well, I think once I start, then I will move on. All right. So, but I really appreciate the excellent guidance that you're giving us and the opportunity that you're giving us. You are an ex excellent uh, guy. Thank you. I hope so. I, I, I do. Uh, I wish we could all meet in the classroom. Uh, you know, I, I still greatly prefer meeting face to face and teaching face to face. Um, but I also understand that our schedules and, and lifestyles and, you know, honestly, the amazing thing is we've got all, all of you from all over the country, really in different places. and We're all together. And it's just neat that we can we can do that. But I do thank you for that um, greatly. Um, what I want to do then, folks, now is move over and I've got you a quick assignment. And this is something I want you to work on for a few minutes. I'm going to give you about 10 or 15 minutes, actually about 10 minutes to work on it. But you've got the network 192.168.12.0 slash 24. And you've got this network. You've got two routers connected with an Ethernet connection between them. One network needs 100 hosts on it. The other network needs 30 hosts on it. Now, how many network, how many hosts are needed in between these two right here? Between these two routers. You got a point? Two. A point, yep. So remember, you've got the subnet, so this has two hosts. So what I want you to do is break out a piece of paper real quickly. And I want you to take about five or 10 minutes. I'm going to pause the recording and I'm going to let you work on this particular um, question. All right. So let me pause my recording recording. So let's talk about how what we've got to do. So the curriculum teaches us to do the following. The curriculum teaches us to go and find the, the largest subnet that you need with number of hosts. And determine how many host bits you've got to leave in order to get that number of hosts. So if we go over here, first off, how many host bits do we have to even play with? The first one is 100, the highest one. It's eight host bits. You got eight host bits, right. There's only eight host bits because it's slash 24. So there's eight host bits left here for us to play with. Well, in order to have 100 hosts on a subnet, we've got to leave at least seven bits. Well, that's telling me that I'm going to go to slash 25. What's the magic number at slash 25? Or what would the variable be at slash 25? <clears throat> Here's what you could do if you need to figure it out. Put your eight host bits, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And if we borrow one more bit, so we turn this on, what's our magic number? 
it would be, remember this is two to the zero, all the way up to two to the seven. So our magic number, if we borrow one bit, is 128. So we would take and we would break this down to zero to 127. And then 128 to 255. Okay. Now, what this is where the curriculum and I have diverged, but we're going to do it the curriculum way because there's a book way to do things. The curriculum then says, okay, we're going to pull this network out and we're going to use it. Goodness gracious, I didn't want a Pentagon. We're going to use it for the 100 host network. So this link right here would be the 192.168.12.0 slash 25 network, which means my first usable IP address in this subnet, what would the first usable IP address be? Uh, dot one. Dot one. So we would put, I would say assign dot one slash 25 right here. And then your host can be anything from dot two up to dot 126 because that's our last usable IP address. So we've, we've taken care of this network. So our network right here, we've taken care of. We've subnetted and we found the network that fits this block. So now we've got to go back over here and we're going to say, okay, we haven't played with this. So let's go ahead and, and borrow. If we borrow one more bit, okay, slash 26. Okay, so if I turn on one more, what's my magic number now? 64. So we're going to break this down from 128 to 191, 192, 255. Okay. Does that make sense? If it doesn't, tell me. Remember, we're doing this, we're doing. VLSM, we're not doing standard subnetting. Okay. So, well, how many hosts are there on the slash 26 network? Am I, you might know. 62. 62, okay. What do we need for our network though? For our, uh, our, our host? 30. We need 30. So this is still too large for what we need in the book world, right? Now, real world, we might would go ahead and pull one of these out because it's got 30 hosts now. It may have, you know, who knows how many in, in the next, you know, in the next um, uh, two weeks, you may add 20 more hosts to it, okay? But what we're going to do is we're going to assume that we're using exactly what the book asked for. So let's go out here and let's borrow another bit. So let's borrow one more bit. So let's do slash 27. If we borrow another bit. This is turned on. What's our variable now? 32. It's 32. So all we do is as we're subnetting, we subnet a subnet. So we're going to go in here and we're going to subnet out with 32. So we'll go down here and we'll take this block right here. And we're going to leave the other block alone because we're not even going to break this one down because we're not going to use it. So we'll do 128 to, I think it's 159, isn't it? Yep. 159 and 160 to 191. Again, notice I didn't create any numbers. I'm not creating numbers. I'm not making anything up. I'm just taking this subnet before it and I'm breaking it down by the magic number or the variable at that borrowed item or that borrowed level. Now this network right here is now the right size to fit what we need because it is a network of two to the fifth host, which gives us 30 hosts. So we're going to go over here, and this can be the 192.168.12.128 slash 27 network. And then the first usable IP address could be put right here would be what? Dot 129, right? Mm -hmm. Slash 27. 
And then here's one of the reasons I don't particularly like the way they do this, because now as we get all the way down and we really know that all we need now is the slash 30, because we need what's left is two hosts. So we figured out, we figured out the network for here. We've got it. So that leaves us with one network left. We've got this blue network here that needs two hosts on it. Well, what we're gonna do is if we were doing this correctly, you know, we pulled already for the red network, we pulled this out. So this has been used, okay. For the green network, we pulled this out. So that's been used. By the way, one of the things you can't do, once you pull this level out, golly, it did it again. Once it's pulled that level out, we can't go back and use this because if we were to go back and try to assign this to anything, the 128 slash 26, it would overlap. Have you ever tried to assign an IP address to a, to a host or on our interface and said overlap net, the networks overlap? It's because you were trying to assign a network that already contained something that had been um, assigned before. But what we need now is to take this 160 to 191 all the way out to slash 30. Well, that gets a little crazy because we look and actually I just went ahead and did it on a cap, subnet calculator because I wanted to make sure I didn't mess up the, the 130. But we go all the way out here, it's 160. Basically, this gets broken down to 160 to 163. And then it'd be 164 to 167 and so on and so forth all the way down until you could do more slash 30s. And then we would pull out this network right here and we would put it here. So it would be 192, 168, 12.160 slash 30. And then we could put dot 161 on one side, dot 162 on the other side. And there's only two usable addresses on that network. So now we have our blue network, which is right here. That is how the curriculum teaches it. The curriculum says solve for your biggest network first and pull out the lowest level and then solve for the rest. Real world, I would have done this backwards. I would have done it like this. I would have pulled out this network, the 128.255. I would have pulled this out for my red network and then subnetted the upper one to get my other networks. And that's just because that way I could have used 192.168.12.0 slash 30, dot four slash 30, and so on and so forth. Okay, let's try another one. Let's do, let's do a different one. Let's do it just a little bit different. Again, we're trying to build this. We're trying to build so that you get comfortable with VLSM. We're not doing, if you'll notice the reason we're not doing this, we're not using the seven holy steps because I'm not asking you to give me X number of subnets. I'm asking you to build subnets that match the number of hosts that are needed. Okay, so let's try something a little different. Let's do same network. So let's just do uh, the two P, two routers, just like so. Let's get us a switch in here. All right, same setup. So we're not changing that. But what I want to do now is I'm gonna make it just not really simpler, but I'm gonna do this. I want this to be 30 hosts. And I want this to be 10 hosts. And this obviously is gonna be two hosts. And we're gonna use the network 10.0.0.0 slash 24. So VLSM, by the way, variable length subnet masking is subnetting a subnet. This is already a subnet, folks. This used to be, or was, the major network 10.0.0.0 slash eight. I've already borrowed 16 bits, all right? So I borrowed 16 bits and I gave you the subnet 10.0.0.0 for you to now use. So I want you to subnet it to meet the requirements that we have right over there using VLSM. Now, I'm gonna teach you how, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you easily what I do every time I've got the VLSM, especially if I've got, um, I'm not being rushed by a test or anything. Here's what I do. I always, if I'm VLSMing, I just take the network and I go, 
Okay, let's take a peek at this and say, I know I've got the 10.0.0.0 slash 24 network, okay? I'm just gonna go ahead and borrow one bit. I know I need a lot more than that, but I'm just gonna borrow it. So that ends up being zero to 127, 128 to 255, all right? Cause I borrow one bit. Remember, we've got eight bits here to play with, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If I borrow one bit, the magic number is 128. And then I just go ahead and say, okay, I'm gonna borrow another bit because I know that I've got to get it down to support at least 30 hosts. So I'm gonna go zero um, to 63, 64 to 127. And I know that that is because if I'm at slash 26, my variable is 64. Still too big though, because I've still got six host bits left and two to the sixth is 64 minus two. So if I use two to the H minus two equals number of hosts or usable hosts, but I'm just gonna say host. If I stop at 26, it's two to the six minus two is 62 hosts per subnet. So this is still too big. So let's borrow another one through slash 27. So now I'm gonna go here, zero to 31, 32 to 63. Now I'm at two to the fifth minus two, which is 30 hosts per subnet, 30 usable hosts. So I am at the, I'm at the right size for what I need because I borrowed three bits, magic number is 32. The book would have you pull this out and use it. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna pull this network out and I'll show you why in a second. I'm gonna pull that network out. So this will be the 198. We're gonna sign to this particular segment, 192.168. Oh, we're not gonna do that. Kelly gets so used to using 192 that he's using 192. We're gonna sign 10.0.0.32 slash 27. What's the first usable IP address in this subnet, in the 32 subnet slash 27? First usable address in this subnet. Dot 33. Dot 33. So I would assign that to the router's interface right there. Okay, slash 27. By the way, when I'm saying slash 27, what does that mean when I go to assign the IP address? What would be the actual mask I would type in? I wish I could just put slash 27, but I can't. What would I have to type in? So if I'm on config dash if, so I'm on the router itself, I'm in that gigabit interface and I'm assigning the IP address. I put IP add, okay, short for address, 10.0.0.33. What would I have to put in for the mask? What does this slash 27 mean? That means there's 27 ones in the mask, right? So let's do this. There's eight ones in the mask. 16, 24, 27. So if I was actually going into the gigabit interface right here on this router, so right there, to physically assign the 33 address to that interface, I would have to use the command IP address 10.0.33.255.255.255.224. I wish we could put slash, but we can't. We have to actually write out the subnet mask. All right. So we've taken care of that network. Now we need 10 hosts. So let's borrow another one through slash 28. So now we're going to go right here. And our variable now, if we borrow one more bit, is 16. So 0 to 15. 16 to 31. You'll notice on all these subnets, the subnet ID is even, the broadcast ID is odd. That's one way you know uh, you have messed up your subnets if you ever see a subnet ID that's odd or a broadcast ID that is even. Now what I would do here, I'm going to pull this out. Okay. And that would be this network. So 10.0.0.16 slash 28. First usable address would be dot 17, last would be dot 30. So I'd assign dot 17 slash 28 here. So what is that mask? What is a 28 mask? 
That would be 255, 255, 255, dot. 240. 240. And remember, the way I'm getting this is, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If you convert it to binary, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Convert it to binary, slash 28 is this in binary. It's 28 ones in the subnet mask. Can anybody remember what the subnet mask does for me? What is the purpose, the book definition of a subnet mask? Uh, to determine the network. And the exactly. Exactly. Very good. To determine what portion of the address is the network and what portion is the host. This is telling me that the network portion of this is these 28 ones right here. The host portion is these, the last four bits right here, which also will show you that two to the fourth power is 16 minus two is 14. So this is a network of 14 hosts. And then last but not least, I could go ahead and do this. I could say, all right, I'm going to go ahead and do slash 29, which turns this on, which makes my value, my variable is 8, so 0 to 7, 8 to 16, excuse me, 8 to 15, not 16. And then slash 30, which would make these two into 0 to 3 and 4 to 7. And then I would come all the way over here, and this would be 10.0.0.0 slash 30, so that I know that dot one slash 30 is on this interface, and dot two slash 30 is on this interface. And you can see that there is only two usable hosts in this slash 30, dot one and dot two, because zero is the subnet ID, Three is the broadcast ID. Questions about that? You'll notice how much cleaner this is because we're able to easily pull dot zero, dot four, dot. But you'll also notice that as soon as I use this zero to three, I can't now go back. If I wanted to go back and say, I want to use this block of addresses, I want to use this zero slash 28 network. I cannot do that. This is now off limits because zero to three is included in here. This is off limits because I've already used zero to three. This is off limits. And all the way back to here because those addresses, the dot one and dot two are included in those. So they are not available. Now, the neat thing though is this, you know, when we look through here, we could still use this slash 26 network. We could still use this slash 25 network. We haven't touched it yet. We could still use this network right here if we wanted to, okay? Now we pulled those other two out here, so we've already used them, so we can't use this dot 32 slash 27 or the dot 16 slash 28, but we can use the other ones because we have not pulled any of those out. This is variable int subnet masking. This is VLSM. This is how modern networks work. This is how we make it to where we're able to easily uh, subnet our networks and make them fit so that we can do what we need to do with our networks. Okay. Questions about this? Super, super important. No questions at all. Everybody's, y'all want to try one more example? Try a crazy one. Let's try a crazy one. It's not too crazy, but let's try a crazy one. We use the same network, but we're going to change things just a little bit. We want a thousand hosts here, and we want a hundred hosts here. And we will still have our normal two hosts here because it's still point to point. We're going to use the network 10.0.0.0 slash eight. So I want you to think about this one and what you would have to do for this one. I'll show you the easiest way I can think to make it work, but let's go ahead and let you work on it just a little bit for yourself.
And I do this because it keeps both of us, all of us from making simple mistakes. I want to tell you again, folks, I strongly suggest that you do not take your CCNA on, uh, that's wrong, it's supposed to be 512. Um, with online testing, go to a testing center, uh, had someone take a test today and they struggled a little bit because of the, all the quirky little rules with the online testing. So if you got students taking certification tests, I might would tell them to, uh, to uh, think about staying, uh, going to the actual testing center. That should be as far as we need to go. We really don't need to get any further than that. Actually, we don't even have to get that far. We can stop right here. Okay. So take a couple of minutes here and let's let's work on it. All right, so here's how I would approach this. First thing I would do is I would go ahead and just write out the host bits because it just makes it life simpler for me. Um, so I'd go right here and I'd say, okay, I know I've got 24 host bits. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, in order to have a thousand hosts left, I know I'm going to have to leave at least 10 host bits. So I would go in here and I would turn on 10 host bits. So I'd leave 10. One, two, three. Actually, we can do it like this. It'd be easier to do it this way. Let me erase this. All right. So when you got to leave 10, so there's eight, nine, 10. So let's turn on all of these. So go down here. So we got one, 
Notice that zero's there. All these would be zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then we're going to do uh, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Now, the, the wild thing here is we've got, uh, we've crossed what we call the, the octet boundary. Um, we've got a variable here of, of one and a variable here of four. So what we'll end up doing is we're going to end up taking this network right here. And we're going to go from a slash a to a slash, you notice here, it's eight plus eight, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. We're actually going to go all the way down to a slash 22. Now, this is a little difficult for students, and actually it's very difficult even for, for me. But what you have to do is you have to realize that we're going to roll the, the third octet by this variable right here. So we're going to start out. And we're going to break this all down to 10.0.0.0 to start with. And then we're going to go 10. Dot, um, 255. Dot, let's see, 124. Actually, it'd be 10.0.0. .0 .0. Sorry, hold on one second. It's actually zero. All the way to 10. Zero dot, one, two, four. So this would be three dot two, five, five. So it's going to be actually like this right here. So this subnet becomes, no, actually, I was right. I apologize. I keep messing up. So this subnet is that subnet right there. Now, once we rolled the third octet and the fourth octet, our next subnet would be 10.0.4.0 to 10.0.7.255. Because it's remember, our variable is four. So it's zero, one, two, three. And then we're not messing with the, the fourth octet at all. And so we keep coming down. Now, what we have done, if we continue to do this, we are just breaking this 10.0.0.0/8 network into a large number of subnets that are consisting of up to 1,024 hosts. Okay, let's look at this. Slash 22, how many host bits are left? 10. 10. What's 2 to the 10th? 2 to the 10th minus 2 is 1,022 hosts per subnet, right? Okay. So by, by using the method they talk about in the book or using it in, in the curriculum, you find the number of bits for your biggest subnet, and then you just take that and you pull it apart and you pull out one of these. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab this one right here. So this second network or the second subnet right here would be what we would pull out to use down here. Now, I will tell you, real world, there's not very many places we're ever going to have a subnet that is going to have a thousand hosts on it, simply because of broadcast problems and other things. We typically never really have a, a network that is less, uh, if it's actually going to have hosts on it, less than, um, or yeah, less than slash 24. This could be a building though. We could have possibly use this to take it to a building and then subnet it. Cause let me show you what we can do now. We then can borrow one more bit. If we borrow slash 23, you will notice our variable becomes two. So we can actually break this into 10.0.0.0 to 10.0.1.255. And then this becomes, um, Zero one. Oh, wait a minute. One, two. Yep, that's it. Ten dot zero dot two dot zero to ten dot zero dot three dot two five five. So I broke this network, the slash twenty two, into two separate subnets using slash twenty three. So my variable became two. I can go one more. Let's come down here and do a slash 24 using those same numbers. So I'm going to break this one down. 
and guess what it becomes 10.0.0.0 .0 .0 .0 to 10.0.0.255 and 10.0.1.0 to 10.0.1.255. So this slash 23 network here was broken down by the variable of one and now we broke it into two. So we're subnetting a subnet. We're still too big though. So we we'll go slash 25. And now we're into territory we're already familiar with because we're familiar with crossing into here. And so it's gonna be 10.0.0.127 and 10.0.0.128 to 10.0.0.255. Go to slash 26. And now we're in here at 10.0.0.0 to 10 dot, actually we wouldn't have to go that far. We can stop now because we're gonna need this, we're gonna need this one. We'll stop right here for a second because what I wanna do is this. We would actually now pull out this network right here to be the one with the 100 host. So this would be 10.0.0.128 slash 25, all right? And then we could actually subnet this all the way down to slash 30. Well, what makes this so easy is we know it's going to be 10.0.0.0 .0 .0 to 10.0.0.3. So it's 10.0.0.4 to 10.0.0.7. It would be 8.11 all the way down. And we could just pull this out right here. And this becomes 10.0.0. .0 .0 zero slash 30, put dot one here, dot two here. So see, it is possible to take this huge network. This was one class A of 16 million hosts. We borrowed 22 bits so that we could create a subnet of a thousand hosts. Then we borrowed two more bits or three more bits to get down to where we have a network of, actually in this case, we actually have 128 hosts. 126 usable hosts, and then we kept borrowing. So VLSM, variable length subnet masking, is the process of subnetting a subnet until it meets the needs for your network. All right. We will continue to work with this, folks, and we will continue to do more examples and more, uh, more labs and get you to work on this. And there are labs in module 11. Um, to have you working on this very thing, have you actually building your own VLSM scheme. Uh, realize again, with their VLS scheme, they always pull this first network out as the one they use for their biggest. I don't, I usually go down one, um, but the book world is, that's what they want. So um, we had to kind of honor what they want when, you're, when they're doing the test, especially if you're doing any of the packet tracers that are subnetting packet tracers, because they expect you to match exactly what they're asking for. Okay, are there any questions? I know that was a lot. That was a lot of material and it's very deep material. Any questions on that? I would strongly suggest going back again and reading uh, the modules on VLSM or the section on VLSM. Um, because you'll notice what they did is they were, they do the exact same thing with VLSM um, in, in the same method I do, except I just, I do it one step at a time, whereas they try to do, uh, they just try to pull it out. So again, if I show you the screen here, you'll notice in the curriculum, what they try to do is they try to say with VLSM, we're going to do it like this. We're just going to pull out these slash 27 and we're going to borrow, you know, the bits and so they're just trying to pull more bits apart, which they do, but they do subnet at first for the biggest numbers, which in this case were the slash 27 networks. And then they went in and took one of those slash 27s and borrowed more bits to get it to a slash 30. And then everything that wasn't used is still down there and available. So it's the same concept of what I did. It's just, they're doing it a little bit differently um, because they want you to 
uh, kind of learn their, their method of how they do it. All right. And again, this packet tracer, when it asks you to do this packet tracer and you're doing it, when it asks you, make sure you use the method they, they give you, which is pull the biggest network out first and then do the rest of your subnets, even though it ends up with your slash 30s being up in some really weird ranges. Um, especially any of you who actually work on networks, you'll be like, wow, that's that's a weird place to put your slash 30s. But that's what the curriculum asks for. All right. Any other questions? Any questions at all? You were all very quiet, which scares me. Either it made sense or it made no sense. Or the, it's hard to tell. Uh, my question, to Kelly, mm -hmm. is that if I start the make attempt um, working on the assignment and I'm unable to finish with it and I want to go back, how is the Cisco network is, uh, because if I save it, where I stop? And then when I go back and I will try to finish with it, did I have to start all over again or? Okay, Jacob, the question is, are you talking about with NetLabs or are you talking about with Packet Tracer? On, on the Net, uh, NetLab. On like NetLab. Nine, uh, 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 nine does, which is nine does one does three, have a longer step, about 20 questions on it. So, okay. and I uh, first of all start working on the, on the, um, on the uh, logical, and then the, after I finish working there, do the network, connecting the wire, that I was unable to uh, observe some of those things, all the steps that they asked me to do. Now, trying what to I go back another time to do the questions. What I would suggest then is when you're doing the lab, you mm -hmm. said it was 913, that, that's, a, that's not a, a lab in here because see, that's a packet tracer. Yes, uh -huh. but if you're, yes, uh -huh. it's a packet tracer. So you have, you, packet tracers have unlimited time on them. So the packet tracers have unlimited time. But now if you're doing one of these labs, what I suggest is when you go to actually like this lab here, give uh -huh. yourself four full hours. So, you know, when you do your reservation, you can reserve up to four hours. So give yourself four hours to do the lab. And then you have the option of doing two more extensions. So really inside of, inside of NetLabs, any of these labs here, you should be able to finish in, in less than four hours. Now, as we move forward, I'll teach you how to save configurations and bring them back up, but those really don't apply to these labs here. Because I, I think you're, you're thinking about Packet Tracer and in Packet Tracer, you have no time limit. You can, you can do those as long as you want. Okay. Any other questions? I will make the, uh, I will start the process on our end to uh, push the dates back on that CCNA two class for your cohort, for cohort one. Um, so we will push that back to July 27th. Um, and then that will give us some time to continue to work on all these materials and to meet and do labs and, and go over labs together. So, and I'll actually go back and do some of these labs, some of the earlier labs like 7, 727, 737, and 1044. We'll basically pick up on 737 and go forward and do those labs together. So if you can't make the second meeting that we have, um, then then actually may not even need a second meeting since we're pushing it to July. Um, but just we'll work on that as we're moving forward and see, okay? All right. Well, that's all I've got. Let me stop the report.